Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. To keep up with our book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of our upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Dr. Alejandro Baidia on the line, and he's founder and chief medical officer over at OrthoNow, and he's also author of Healthcare from the Trenches, an inside account of the complex barriers in U.S. healthcare from the provider and patient perspective. Um, Dr. Baidia, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. Oh, man, so excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to get into this new book, um, Healthcare from the Trenches. Uh, first off, congrats. I saw that you already hit number one on Amazon new releases um, for the book. So congrats on that. Huge accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Like, even with a pre-order, I think if the topic interests people, that, that's how that happens because the, the book isn't even officially out. Yeah, I love it. And uh, just, uh, I mean, we pre-ordered a copy over here already, so I'm excited to read it myself. I haven't I haven't read it all yet. Um, but before we get into the book, I want to go further into it. But I don't want to assume, I know you're a return guest, but I don't want to assume that our new listeners caught your first episodes. Uh, so let's just give a quick overview of what you're doing over at Ortho now, please. Sure. Well, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic threw everyone a curveball, particularly those of us in healthcare. Um, we, you know, there were, there were definitely some challenges in, in this, uh, which I relayed uh, the first time we spoke. And with, with COVID, it, it, it really exacerbated that. Um, but what soon happened, we realized that people didn't want to go to the emergency room anymore. And orthopedic issues still occur. You know, that's one of the things mm-hmm. the public needs to understand is while the hospitals were full of patients, you know, being ruled out to COVID or getting treated for a, a bad stage of that, um, there are other medical problems that continue. And, um, and you know, orthopedics is just certainly one of those big, big areas. So we were doing a lot of telemedicine, which for us is nothing new. So we, we have been innovators and er- certainly early adopters in many areas. So when this happened, we have been very busy with what I, co- I coined uh, hashtag teleorthopedics. So mm-hmm. it's really telehealth for the musculoskeletal problem. And then just yesterday, we reopened our brick and mortar, um, and we are still looking for uh, the right strategic partner and investor for us because we are, you know, we are going to go national, uh, but uh, that, 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 you know, it's contingent upon that. Yeah, I was thinking about you guys as this all um, kind of un, un, you know unraveled, if you will, the whole yeah. pandemic thing. And I'm like, and I'm like, geez, I, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, man, one of my worst nightmares right now would be like springing my springing my ankle or something else. And you're like, or this other thing that's not necessarily like threatening or something else. And you're like, you want to go in, and you're like, man, but I don't want to be around a bunch of sick people. Or like, I was like, that was one of my major things of like this whole thing was don't get sick on anything else because I don't want to be around that environment or anything else so um glad glad you brought all that up and how it's working and glad to know that you've been i mean you guys have been pioneering telemedicine for a long time so um glad to see you're still able to take care of and help your patients there um i do want to spend some time on the book so let's just really jump right in here so healthcare from the trenches an inside account of the complex barriers in u.s healthcare from the provider and patient perspective what was the inspiration for this book <laughs> well uh, the inspiration was really monumental frustration and the fact mm. that I think people, the, the you know, the, the lay public doesn't really understand what we face in trying to deliver health care and, and patients who consume a lot of health care certainly know that it, it is really a grind to, to get things done because of the amount of bureaucracy um, and, and hurdles that are placed in your way. And yet, and yet we have you know, the second most expensive healthcare system, well, no, the most expensive healthcare system, but I think we're twice as mm-hmm. expensive as Norway in terms of percentage of, per, uh, of uh, GDP. So we obviously are, you know, we're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And the, the discussion, you, you see all this, even with COVID, I mean, you see Fauci on the, uh, uh, you know, every day, on, and, and, and Fauci, believe me, I, I was involved when, you know, the AIDS hit, and I trained at Bellevue mm-hmm. Hospital in New York, and Fauci was a big name then. But, but the people who really can, can address 
uh, how to treat, uh, you know, a, a, a pandemic efficiently at the, at the grassroots level where the people are actually providing the care. It, it's not, you know, it, it isn't even Dr. Fauci. It isn't, it isn't the CDC. It's, you get, you know, 10 ER physicians and nurses and techs in a room and you say, okay, how can we do this more, more, more efficiently, more cost effectively mm-hmm. and with, with better results? And it's like that with healthcare. And we do not have those kind of dialogues in this country. It is, it, and, and COVID-19 is exposing that because now people actually want to hear from us in the trenches. You, you'll mm-hmm. see CNN uh, interview uh, somebody, you know, in an ER who looks like they're, you know, dressed for battle. And, yeah. uh, and I think that, that society now, I mean, you know, the whole, uh, you know, we're, we're heroes with, without capes sort of thing. This mm-hmm. is a new, really a new perspective. Um, or I should say an old perspective that's come back. Uh, last two, three decades, physicians were not held in the same sort of esteem. And really, several people uh, are, you know, entities are responsible for that, it's largely the insurance industry. Let's be, let's be very frank. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that has, um, that has really, really hurt health care. Uh, not that we don't, obviously, we need insurance. We need big, big hospitals. We need pharmaceuticals. But we, we, as, as the clinicians, we've gotten lost in the shuffle. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I uh, most people have, and myself included, were that um, I think some people took it for granted. I'll say myself. I mean, I, I maybe took it for granted. I didn't really understand because it's always there. It's working. It's functioning. You can go in the doctor when you want. You can do these things. But um, to really think about, like, understanding that that's a service being provided to you and the luxury that we have of being able to walk into the doctor, I mean, it's it's, it's an amazing thing. I know I have a newfound, and not under that disrespect, but I have a new found respect to being able to go in and have somebody there to take care of me like that i didn't maybe that, think that, about that, in the that's past true. and and in the end our core work is um i won't even say the same as before because actually it's better we know so much more it it, it you know it's amazing and, and, and the same for a lot of my colleagues in other countries i mean uh the world has become very much a flat place which is good okay and that that that's due to several reasons but what's happening in the u.s which our colleagues don't uh, get quite as much of is the 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 uh, the regulatory and, and bureaucratic uh, battle, mm-hmm. the money being spent in places that actually isn't even relevant to direct care, and that is um, that is the problem, and that's what we need to talk about, and that's what this book does, not by presenting a lot of statistics, which I throw that in there. We have other contributors, um, uh, including uh, uh, another orthopedic surgeon, also Cuban American who uh, wrote the foreword, and he's written several books uh, on, on, on health care. And he's, um, you know, he, he's quoted in there quite a bit. But I'm talking about the, the everyday stories that get, will get people to say, wow, there's something wrong here. I, and I don't have the solution for it, although the last chapter we do, uh, I do present some of my perspective and that of a, quite a few other clinicians. Uh, but but it, it, it's good. It's telling the story uh, at the at, at sort of the, the grassroots level, and that's what the book uh, set out to do. And I think I think really accomplishes it. What do you, What are some of the major takeaways that you want uh, the average everyday reader that picks up this book to um, to, to walk away with? <laughs> well, I don't want to give too much of the book away, so I will tell you in general. Uh, I we talk about different. It, 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 it's set up into chapters. That where we discuss the, the the a certain entity and we say how we can get it uh, to work better. Uh, for example, government. I, you know, we, so we talk a lot about Medicare and the ACA. You know, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, then we talk about even on a city count and county level how there are barriers uh, where we could actually provide healthcare a lot more expeditiously and cost effectively, and our own government. Um, so the same thing, obviously, with with insurance companies. I mean. You know, I blow away the whole concept of authorization. It, it's an absolutely, really ridiculous concept, and I, I expose that. So what you're going to see is a number of, of different uh, basic concepts that I spell out. I, I'll, let me tell you just two quick things that happened today. I mean, it's a constant. If you're in the trenches, this is a constant frustration. Today, a CMS, which is Medicare, Center for Medicare Services, just told my, my uh, 
but my collections gal, who, you know, I have to have a full employee just to bill and collect, which is crazy, two employees, told mm. me that Medicare just, just denied payment for a second finger. I, I, do, I did a fusion for arthritic, for these arthritic joints that are very painful. And, I do, and I'm able to do two at a time in the, in the same hand. Well, I just, and this is a, actually the first I've heard of this, is that Medicare wasn't, didn't pay for the second finger. So what, <laughs> Wait a minute. What, I can't. What, Hold on. Well, I'll tell you what it does. If, if I was a little bit less, uh, if I was not as, uh, you know, if I was less uh, ethical, yeah. I would say, okay, yeah. Mrs. Jones, we'll do your first finger. The second I remove the pins and that fusion took, then two or three months later, we'll do the other finger. Well, now we're charging uh, Medicare two anesthesia uh, services, or two visits to the, to the uh, operating room, and yet I'm being pierced. What they should do is they should say, Dr. Badia, for doing the second finger, you know, we'll pay you 20 or 30% more because you're, you're able to do more in one city. I mean, think about wow. how absurd that is because both fingers needed it. I mean, they were both exquisitely painful. The whole thing takes me 30, 40 minutes to do, and I solved that patient's problem. And yet that's how I'm rewarded. Wow. Uh, workers' compensation is a big company called Corvell. I, I, I doubt anybody from there is listening because I, I don't think these people get really get involved in, 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 in caring about about how we can make healthcare care better. Uh, Corvell is a big workers' compensation. Um, so I set up a meeting with them uh, last month to try to talk some of these issues and teach them how we can actually save them money. For example, ortho now is a no-brainer. Most workers' comp patients go to one of these general occupational health clinics where a very well-meaning physician is seeing over 90% orthopedics, but they don't have orthopedic training. So inevitably, in most cases, it ends up being a second visit to somebody like me. Well, we, we disrupted that totally. So, but, but, but Corvell, in many ways, has really, uh, uh, you know, just, just mi- really mistreated the clinician who's trying to provide the care. So, uh, I just found out an hour ago. Um, I had a second meeting. I think it was either for today or tomorrow. Um, they canceled it. They canceled the other one same day. So, like, I'm not I'm not that busy. <laughs> so, a, 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 an insurance company can literally cancel a meeting with me last minute. Wow. For, yeah. I, I mean, think about how outrageous that is. Now, what recourse do I have? Well, here's the recourse. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the American people in a book. That's the recourse. That's awesome. I love it. And I, I'm I'm excited. Well, you have me all fired up to read this book, Dr. <laughs> Badia. I know I had it, but now I'm like, wait a minute. What else don't I know? Oh, you got me fired up over like here. That. It's full of stories like that. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, the malpractice chapter will make people cry. I mean, I mean, there's oh, one my God. A colleague I'm from Philadelphia tells three different stories that each one of them is more unbelievable than the other. I mean, wow. he got sued for a patient who had a stroke two years after he did a wrist surgery. Like, what does the stroke have to do with it? You know what I'm saying? Wow. This, this, this is something that we need to talk about. This is good. And uh, I'm glad I'm glad that you went through and uh, and compiled and, and brought the stories to light. And I'm excited for this book to be released and uh, to go live. Um, that being said, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on Ortho Now and to learn more about what you're doing or and also to learn more about the book, I mean, what's the best way for people to follow up and to connect? Sure. Well, the book, uh, just to make it easy for people, there's a, there's a pop-up on my website now. My website's easy, drbadia.com, so that's D-R-B-A-D-I-A. Uh, and at drbadia.com, when you get to the homepage, there's a, a little pop-up, our webmaster put that takes you to the, to the right page, and then you can, you can uh, purchase the pre-order the book on Amazon for a big $2.99. <laughs> that's the Kindle version. Uh, I'm learning about all this stuff because I've always published in scientific journals or, or, or you know, chapters in textbooks. So this is the first sort of layperson uh, book I've written. And uh, I don't know yet the release about the paperback, but I have a feeling we'll probably be going with a hardcover as well. But the Kindle version is available for purchase now, and it should be officially uh, released. So if you buy it now, you'll get a, a, a link uh, to your email. And that'll be in about mid June. Fantastic. And, and well, uh, more so now, which is certainly mm-hmm. mentioned in the book, of course, is just one strategy to save uh, time and money in healthcare. Uh, Ortho now is the uh, URL is simply orthonowcare.com. Perfect. 
Well, Dr. Padilla, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about the new book and, of course, all the great work you're doing over at Ortho Now. Awesome having you back on the show. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to uh, head to the website, uh, missionmatters.com. Check us out there. Also, YouTube channel. Um, if you're watching us there, definitely leave us some comments on the video. And if you and don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Love to have you as a return listener. And Dr. Badia, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. It's really a pleasure to, to be with you and, and you know, share information with the public. Thanks.